Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to take a look at the question of who has been president in the MCU and how that might play a very important role as we move into MCU Phase 5. So we're going to take a historical look at all of the times that any uh, MCU entry has referred to an actual real-world president, thus establishing that they were also president in the MCU. And then we'll look at how this may play into Secret Invasion uh, in a very important role. All right, so let's dive right in and see what we can find out. So first we have William McKinley, which is the first historical president to be mentioned in the MCU. He was our 25th president, and actually his picture here did not appear uh, in the episode, but Agent Carter uh, had an episode uh, that mentioned him, and in particular referencing his assassination. Uh, It was attributed in Agent Carter to being done by some uh, corrupt businessmen who were trying to politically manipulate uh, the United States. So I will also mention that uh, I I will be talking about uh, pre-Disney Plus shows, uh, Agent Carter, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, the Netflix shows, and granted, You know, currently it's unclear whether Feige is keeping them canon or not. But keep in mind, they were 100% canon when they were released. And until Feige says they're not, we have to assume they are, uh, even though I do wonder at times. But uh, that's why I'm going to be using some of them, such as I used Agent Carter, to determine who was president or not, because they are very important in in this little uh, Easter egg hunt and trying to figure out who is president in the MCU. All right. So next we have Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our... 32nd president. Now, he was mentioned in several places. Uh, He was in newspaper articles in both Iron Man and Iron Man 2. He was mentioned and shown in footage in all three different Captain America movies. He showed up uh, in a mention in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, and even in a picture in the Loki series. So, yeah, very important president, not just in the real world, but also in the MCU. All right, next we have Harry Truman, the 33rd president. Uh, Now, Truman was uh, pictured and mentioned in two episodes of Agent Carter, and in fact, this picture came from one of those episodes. All right, then we have Dwight D. Eisenhower, the 34th president. Eisenhower was uh, shown in footage in an Avengers scene that actually ended up being deleted, uh, was in footage in Captain America the Winter Soldier, and was in a picture and mentioned in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And in fact, here you see him with Steve Rogers. All right, then we have John F. Kennedy, the 35th president. Now, he was not actually shown uh, in any of the movies, uh, but he was mentioned in, in two very important ones. In The Winter Soldier, it was mentioned that he was actually assassinated by Bucky, Uh, the Winter Soldier. And then in Civil War, Sharon mentions JFK in her eulogy for Peggy Carter. Uh, Sharon says she had a photograph in her office, uh, Aunt Peggy standing next to JFK. And as a kid, that was pretty cool, but it was a lot to live up to. I like that. That's a neat reference to JFK, establishing him as a president in the MCU. All right, then we jump to the 39th president, Jimmy Carter. Now, Jimmy Carter was shown in a photo uh, with Drakoff in The Black Widow, and was in a newspaper article in Runaways. Then we move to Ronald Reagan, the 40th president. Now, uh, Reagan was also not actually shown in uh, any entry in the MCU, and in fact, wasn't even said specifically that he was president. However, in The Winter Soldier, you might remember Jasper Sitwell shutting down the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, uh, making a mention of that in the movie. So, you know, that kind of establishes he must have been president, because in the real world, we wouldn't name a Washington National Airport after just anyone. It would be after a president. So very likely in the MCU, this establishes Ronald Reagan as the 40th president. All right, next we have George H.W. Bush, the 41st president. Now, uh, George H.W. Bush was shown briefly uh, in the on-screen Floria photographs in Age of Ultron, right after uh, Ultron first comes to life and as he was looking over humanity's history. So that's why it's a little blurry, a little hard to capture, obviously, but uh, that was establishing George H.W. Bush as the 41st president. Then we have Bill Clinton, the 42nd U.S. president. Um, Now, Clinton was shown in Avengers Age of Ultron during that archival footage, just like George H.W. Bush. Uh, He was in a picture in Captain Marvel that I guess was in a deleted scene, but then more importantly, he was in this picture with Drakoff um, in the Black Widow movie. And it kind of makes me laugh to think that in the real world, if President uh, Clinton or President Carter went to go see Black Widow, uh, and they were like, hey, wait a minute, we, we weren't with that dude. <laughs> Get us out of there. We hate that guy. 
Uh, so yeah, I don't know if they were happy about that, but nonetheless, they did appear, both of them, in uh, Black Widow. And then Bill Clinton also was mentioned in two Luke Cage uh, episodes. All right, then we're going to jump past real-world president George W. Bush, the 43rd president, because he was never mentioned in the MCU. Of course, he ran for office and won in both 2000 and 2004. So, you know, presumably someone was president between Clinton and Obama, but it's not officially mentioned. So we jump to Barack Obama, who, you know, I, I guess is the 44th president. I mean, that assumes that in the MCU that the same president won twice, Uh, We don't know. Uh, So we'll call him 44th. But in fact, we're going to see, really, I'm not 100% sure Barack Obama even was president. And you may scratch your head and say, how is that possible? He was president. Of course he was uh, in the MCU. But hang with me. Put a pin on that, and, and we'll come back to that. But we definitely know Obama existed in the MCU because of this poster in Iron Man 2, where Tony Stark, of course, takes um, Barack Obama's famous poster from his 2008 presidential run and makes it all about himself, right? Uh, Then we also see Jay Carney, who is Obama's real-world press secretary, in uh, Avengers talking about the alien invasion. And of course, Avengers took place in May of 2012, so that would mean that seemingly Obama was president in 2012. Uh, We also see this stack of books in uh, The Winter Soldier, and notice the white one is about Barack Obama. Right above it is a book about George H.W. Bush, and then above that is an interesting book entitled Madam President. So, you know, not sure what that's implying. Is it possible that there was a female president uh, instead of George W. Bush, or is it just a fictitious book? Who knows, but still, interesting nonetheless. Uh, And then Obama's in this picture here with Piranha Jones in a Luke Cage episode. On top of that, uh, Obama is mentioned in Runaways and even shows up in a picture in the One Shot's uh, Peter's to-do list, which, you know, originally was, I think, going to be part of Far From Home, and then they cut it, but then released it as kind of an extra uh, with the uh, Blu-ray DVD. So, wow, I mean, surely Obama was president, right? That's a lot of references to Obama. Well, again, put a pin in it. We're going to head to the next president, and then we're going to reflect back on Obama and see if we can figure this out. So presumably the 45th president (laughs) is Matthew Ellis. Now, it's kind of interesting to note, Ellis is the first uh, MCU-specific president. In other words, not reflective of the real world. Um, So, uh, you know, because up to this point, it's been all real-world presidents that have been established to be also presidents in the MCU. All right, so here's where this gets interesting. In Captain America, the Winter Soldier, there's the display honoring Captain America. And notice there is a um, uh, quote, welcome back cap, attributed to President Matthew Ellis. Now keep in mind that this quote would have been said when Cap came back from the ice in 2011. So, I mean, for Ellis to have been the one to have said it, you would think he has to be somebody important. I mean, at a minimum, vice president or something, but probably he was president because they're calling him president there. And granted, it could be that because he's president later, they just put president, you know, with whatever his title was back in 2011, they're still calling him president now. Who knows? But anyway, this is just interesting. It kind of implies Ellis was president in 2011, but there's more. So we look at the fact that we know he was president in Iron Man 3. And Iron Man 3, if you've watched my timeline videos, is pretty solidly established to be December of 2012 because it's 13 years after New Year's Eve of 1999. Well, Obama was elected in 2008 and so would still be president in December of 2012. That's interesting that Ellis is being shown as the president. And keep in mind, he has a very important role throughout the movie. I mean, he's not president-elect. He is clearly the president uh, in Iron Man 3. But there's more. If we look at what Killian said when he's talking to Pepper Potts, he says, after years of dodging the president's ban on, quote-unquote, immoral biotech research, then, of course, he created Extremis. But the president he's referring to is, is Ellis, And he said, after years of dodging the president's ban, well, that would imply Ellis has been president well before December of 2012. That's interesting. But there's more. (laughs) Then we look at when uh, Killian captures the president. 
and he he refers to uh, the uh, Roxon Corporation's oil tanker Norco that spilled millions of gallons of crude oil off the coast of Pens- uh, Pensacola. Uh, Ellis, of course, used his political influence to ensure the Roxon executives, you know, weren't imprisoned, and as Killian says, the fat cats got off. Well, this oil spill was from a couple years ago, so again, if if Ellis was president and was using his political influence, then that would imply he's been president for a couple years. Um, then kind of throw on on top of that the fact that uh, Killian says, oh, and I, I didn't even care about that. <laughs> I just needed a reason to kill you on TV that would play well, right? Um, you see, I've moved on, he says. I found a new political patron, and by this time tomorrow, he will have your job, of course, the vice president. Because remember, the vice president was working with uh, Killian, which, by the way, does establish uh, who was vice president under Ellis. But... Yeah, I mean, this is just now multiple indications that Ellis has been president for a while. So was Obama elected in 2008? That's the real question. Because remember, he had two terms, 2008 and 2012. So was Obama elected in 2008? Well, let's talk about it. There's a couple options. Yes, he could have been elected in 2008, But by, let's say, 2010, boy, at the latest, 2011, it certainly made it seem like Ellis has been president for a while. But maybe something happened. Maybe there was a scandal and Obama had to step down. Maybe, even worse, he was injured or killed. Personally, I don't think the MCU would go that direction. That's pretty morbid for, obviously, a popular president. But who knows? It's a possibility, at least. Okay, another possibility is that he ran and won in 2004, and Ellis then ran and won in 2008, beating him out. I mean, that's possible. Obama was 47, I think, when he was elected president, but the youngest has been JFK at 43, so that would mean that you know Obama was elected at the same age as JFK. It's certainly not out of the question, and maybe that answers part of who was president during what would have been George W. Bush's in the real world. In fact, if Madam President was true and there was a Madam President, maybe she was president in 2000 and Obama in 2004. That's possible. But another crazy thought is maybe Obama never was president. He ran, but he lost in 2008. I mean, we know he ran because that Tony Stark poster was the poster Obama used in 2008. And you might say, well, all those people had pictures with him and there was the book about him. That that wouldn't happen if he wasn't president. But remember, Bernie Sanders has run for president has never won, but is still very popular. People take pictures with him, write books about him, etc. And maybe that appearance by Jay Carney, maybe Carney was not the press secretary for Obama in the MCU. He was Ellis's press secretary, right? Who knows? So I don't know what to think. All I know is it certainly seems like Ellis was president for the majority of what would have been Obama's first term. So what do you think in the comments? Which of those options do you think? Honestly, my guess is this one, that that Obama ran but never won, but I could also see him running and winning in 2004. So both of those are possible. All right, let me know what you think. What we do know is Ellis definitely won in 2012 because he was still president by the time of Civil War in 2016 because he was appearing in the WHIH news front uh, news stories talking about oversight necessary for the Avengers. So in fact, Ellis really has appeared all over the place. Um, he was uh, in Captain, mentioned in Captain America, the Winter Soldier, as one of the targets of Project Insight. Uh, he was in a deleted scene in Ant-Man. <clears throat> He's been in several Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes, a Daredevil episode in the newspaper, and The Punisher, uh, he was mentioned. So, yeah, Ellis has been all over. And, of course, again, was the first fictitious president out there. But so, theoretically, he did not run a third time. Uh, if, he, if he ran and won in 2008... And in 2012, then that would leave it open for Donald Trump to have won as the 46th president. Now, note that this is just a stock photo of him because uh, he's never mentioned, I'm sorry, he's never seen in any MCU properties. However, he is mentioned in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Runaways, uh, Hellstrom in a newspaper article, and then multiple episodes of Luke Cage. Because you might imagine Luke Cage being a more politically driven uh, of the series on Netflix you know, there might have been people in Harlem that had disagreements with Trump's policies. And by the way, I'm not getting political. 
Luke Cage, you know, got political, and that, that's their right to do that, obviously. And so they had a lot of statements about uh, Trump throughout that. Also mentioning um, Make America Great Again at one point, uh, Trump's slogan, and even that uh, Clinton lost, Hillary Clinton lost. So it seems, at least from, from several pieces of evidence, that Trump was indeed the 46th president. Now that opens the question of, okay, if he won in 2016, was he blipped? I don't know. I mean, that's interesting. I mean, if he was blipped, then he was gone in 2018, which then was Pence, then the president, or somebody else if Pence was blipped. So it'd be really interesting to learn in Secret Invasion, which supposedly is going to take place somewhat during the blip, if, uh, you know, what happened? Who was the president? What we do know, however, is maybe the 47th president maybe 48th. At this point, we don't. We just don't know. They, Marvel's got to give us more before we can get firm numbers. But we do know that Ritson is the president at the end of phase four uh, during Wakanda Forever, because this unfortunately very blurry picture, but uh, the ticker down there says Ritson signed trade pact with New Asgard. So Ritson was clearly the president uh, during Wakanda Forever, which I personally believe is near the end of uh, 2025. Uh, so that would mean Ritson could have been elected president in 2024 and therefore was still president uh, in 2025, or he was elected president even in 2000 and served, or 2000, sorry, 2020, and served two terms. So maybe he was elected you know, during the blip after uh, Donald Trump doing one term, he was elected and then reelected. So who knows, but I really hope that we learn some more during um, uh, Secret Invasion on that. What we do know, though, is from Wakanda Forever is he is a hawk. He is a hawk of a president because he's got Val as his CIA director and was actually suggesting to take offensive action against Wakanda and even destabilizing offensive action. Like, wow, wow. So Ritson is definitely a hawk, and we're seeing this escalation between the U.S. and Wakanda, obviously, uh, throughout that movie. All right. What else do we know about Ritson? Well, we know he's going to show up in Secret Invasion. So now we get to the ties with Secret Invasion. We know he's president, uh, that he shows up in uh, London for emergency talks, and you see Rhodey there. Uh, and then we also know from some of the trailers that uh, it looks like he's in a pretty bad accident. So now we move into maybe some theories. I would throw out the fact that they have not mentioned uh, a president in the MCU, you know, well, uh, since uh, shows around 2018 time frame, the, the, the ending of Luke Cage uh, and some of those shows, obviously the movies haven't mentioned it at all. For it to start coming up again, you know, Feige, Feige is no dummy. He, he puts facts in when they have relevance. So I think the president is going to play a very key role in Secret Invasion. We also know there's obviously going to be scrolls. So you probably see where I'm going. Wouldn't it be wild to learn that Ritson is actually a scroll? We would know that because uh, if the, he's in an accident here and he's either seriously injured or killed, he would revert back to scroll form. Can you imagine how crazy that would be, the paranoia that would create in the MCU that the president was a scroll? Bad enough there's scrolls that could impersonate anybody. They were impress impersonating the president. So I don't know, that's just a theory. But either way, if he either dies or is incapacitated or is a scroll, he may no longer be president. So let's think about that then. Who would then be president? Well, you know, Val is CIA director, but who else might be on his staff? What if former Secretary Ross is now Vice President Ross and then becomes President Ross? Wow, now that would be crazy. I mean, think about it though. Marvel could have just let Ross's legacy end with Endgame, which is the last, from a timeline standpoint, Ross's last appearance at Tony's funeral. Since, of course, uh, William Hurt tragically passed away, they could have just let the character fade away and be done. He had a good run. But no, they recast with a huge name actor, Harrison Ford. You don't do that unless something big is going to happen. Plus, keep in mind, Harrison Ford has played the president in movies before. He was an awesome president in Air Force One. So, wow, that would be fascinating if by the time New World Order is upon us, the movie New World Order, is if Harrison Ford slash Thunderbolt Ross slash Secretary Ross is now President Ross. And then take it a step further. Supposedly in New World Order, we're going to be getting some Red Hulks. 
Imagine if Ross ends up becoming the Red Hulk himself, and we have President Red Hulk. Oh my goodness. Wow. All kinds of crazy stories there. But regardless, if you have a President Ross, what's really key there is that means Val, his CIA director, obviously, you know, maybe they create the Thunderbolts with the name Thunderbolt in honor of the president, right? But more importantly, that makes the Thunderbolts a wing of the military, basically, you know, because they're being run by the government. Wow. So lots of crazy things. All of this hinging around who's president in the MCU. So I've thrown out a lot of theories. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think uh, Ritson will end up being a scroll? Do you think Ross will end up being president? Will we get a President uh, Red Hulk? What was the deal with Obama? Going back to that, do you think Obama was ever president? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-expanding, ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe.